I have much information in the teacher's manual for the creation reading course. Um, this is the introductory teacher's manual to prepare for the creation reading course. And this gives you a whole view of what the course is about, pretty much. But it also gives you a guide as to how you can help your child from birth, almost, to enter into the easiest way to learn writing and reading. There's a preparation. The way things are in the world, things are done upside down and backwards, and so many complications are brought in for the little child that they have to spend years trying to sort this out, and some adults still haven't gotten it sorted out. And so it causes dyslexia. Sometimes they call it, call it minimal brain damage or low IQ when you can't get this figured out without ever being taught. And you remember how they asked about Jesus. How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How can a child learn to write their letters correctly if no one ever teaches them? It just doesn't happen very well. You can say, well, just let them copy. But copying does not always tell you directional stroking. It doesn't tell you the correct slant. Uh, it, it is very lacking. And so it's up to us as parents and teachers to teach the children. Every child deserves to be told at least once the correct way to write a letter. They may never remember who told them or when they were told that, but they should be told at least once. And we have a um, systematic way to teach reading with this course, which goes with the multisensory method. And this method has been tested and endorsed and has never, ever failed to teach one willing student to read. Now, that's a pretty good commendation for it. However, in the secular world, the multisensory method is used without God in the picture. But when we bring God and the Bible in, we find the children are learning to read with the method in a much shorter period of time. Usually they say with the secular method, using the multisensory without the Bible, children learn to read after spelling and studying 150 words. With this method, using the Bible, they have been learning to read from spelling and writing and analyzing 40 words up to 90 words. Praise the Lord, I say. The only explanation I can give is the Holy Spirit working with it, opening their understanding. What does it say in Psalm 119? The entrance of thy word giveth understanding. Uh -huh. Giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The children are simple. They need to be taught. But God's word gives them light. And it just helps them learn so much faster. But the way to start with the little tots is... They need to learn to speak distinctly. They need to learn the phonemes, we call them, the sounds of the English language. There's only 44 of them, and they're connected to at least 70 phonograms. And a phonogram, by definition, do you know what a phonogram is? Okay, phono means sound, and gram is the letter. So it's the letter sound. Okay? The phonogram is the letter sound. The phonem is just the sound. So you can teach those phonemes to the child as they're learning to speak. And I would like to give you an example here, just going through um, 
the little alphabet chart. Here's a little alphabet chart. Can you see it? Kind of small, far for some of you, but you know the alphabet, so you'll know what I'm talking about. But I want to just say the alphabet to you like I say it to a baby or a toddler. And this is where we start. And everyone, whether you're adult or you're a teen or whoever, you can learn to say it like we say it to the little ones. Then you can teach the little ones and you're getting all the sounds for the alphabet. So here's what we do. We say a, 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 b, k, s, d, e, e, f, g, j, h, i, i, j, k, o, m, n, a, o, u, p, k, r, s, z, t, a, u, u, u. Four sounds. V, U, X, Y, I, Z. Now, the reason I've said that is because most people haven't heard the alphabet said this way before. If you will teach your child the alphabet this way instead, instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, this will lead directly into spelling, writing, and reading without confusion. Thank you. So that is one trick for your little, little ones. Because I still have failed to work with one child. Maybe my granddaughter will be the first, because my daughter understands. But that hasn't already learned their A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But this way, there are certain letters 17 make only one sound. That's no harder to learn than a letter name. Five of them make two sounds, three of them make three sounds, and one makes four sounds. It's not that hard. You can all conquer it <laughs> real easily. And when we talk to the children about this, learning the sounds rather than the names, I have animal pictures, and you can use any animal book, picture book you have. But I like to use the animal pictures, and I say, what we want isn't the name of the animal. We want to imitate the sounds the animal makes. So can you help me? What kind of sound would this animal make? Yeah. Or? Right? Sometimes. Right? Okay. What kind of sounds does this animal make? Very good. I heard that. Chee, 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 chee. They are the alarm in the woods when we go out. What about this kind of animal? It's a puppy. But we want the sound. Ruff, we heard. Yip, yip, yip. Bow, wow, 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 wow. Woof! <laughs> right? So we pretend the letters are animals. And this is the picture of the animal, <laughs> so to speak. And the sound it makes is a, a, a. But we have a sp specific order we have those in. And the order we have the sounds in are specifically how often that letter makes that sound in the English language. So a is the most common sound. This one makes. A is the second most common. And a is the third most common or the least common. And so that's what the order is. Now, in the creation reading course, we have these all summarized, but we also have them on cards individually. And the back of the card uh, gives, tells what sound that each letter makes. It gives illustrations of words that contain that sound, and it tells how to write that letter. Now, the reason we tell the child how to write the letter, not only show them how to write it, we show them also. 
but we tell them as we show them is because they can remember that then. Okay, I start here, I go this direction, then I retrace, right? Come down and hit the baseline, come up to the middle, and then pull a line down, retracing, and curve up, or, you know, <laughs> there's an A for you, but, but um, this goes through all the letters and the, um, and the numerals also to tell them how to write those. So these, to me, are very valuable. They're good for quizzing and will help the children learn their phonograms correctly. We want to say the sounds as purely as possible. For example, when we make the sounds for the consonants, we try to leave off what we call the schwa sound. You know what the schwa sound is? It's just like an uh. For example, for the sound of B, we want to say b, not ba. Do you hear the difference? And for c, we don't say ka, we say k, s. There's no voice needed to make that sound. And I have made up several little games that I can use for the children where we can quiz on how many sounds a letter makes, which ones are voiced, which are unvoiced. And you could do this yourself. I mean, it's not much to it, but um, you can. And the cards tell which ones are voiced and which are unvoiced. But still, it's kind of fun to quiz with them and have a little game. You can quiz on them this way, that way, and the other way. But these alphabet phonograms, they need to learn the most thoroughly. After the phonogram, we have the multi-letter phonogram which is two to four letters each. And each of these are very important to know how to pronounce correctly also. And we have the sound on the back and examples of words where each of those are used and little rules or things that you need to remember about each specific one. But we want to drill the children on these. these are not part of our introductory part, but they are the full lesson when we start with the multi-letter. And also the full lesson includes using the word cards. And the word cards have every word in them in Genesis 1 through 2, 3 for the creation reading course. And these have the words syllabicated. They have them... Uh, marked to help a child understand why the word is spelled the way it is and all the spelling rules that apply to this particular word are listed there with it. So this is very effective for word study for the children and also the cards are handy for just quizzing them and drilling them to see if they can have quick recognition of the words. But the word study is the very most important. Um, in them writing it. Now, why do the children need to write in order to learn to read most efficiently? Do you know why? It's the multisensory approach. When they write, they see it, they say it. Every uh, letter or multi-letter phonogram that makes one sound, a group of letters that makes one sound in that word, every one of them they say as they write those letters. And when they finish writing it in syllables, if it's more than one syllable, then they, they mark it. And we have in the creation reading course a little sheet that guides us in how to mark every word. We single underline certain things, we double underline others, we draw a bridge when the silent final E makes the previous letter say its name. We number things. You notice I mentioned on the phonograms, some of them make two, three, four sounds. If they make the first sound, we don't number it. But if they make the second, third, or fourth sound, we number it. 
we say in this word, this phonogram is making its second sound, or it's making its third sound. And I love it because I was working with one little boy recently, and he couldn't remember one word in his list, but when he looked in his own writing, in his spelling book, how he had marked it, he said, ah, oh, I know, and he said it correctly. He was reading it off of his own notes, you might say. So it was very, very good. And for presenting the words, all the new words for each lesson, we have a spelling dialogue outline. This lists what the teacher tells and shows the student for that word, and things that are discussed between teacher and student, and then what the child or student writes. And then they tell the teacher how to write it, especially during the early lessons. Once they get their stroking down really well, we skip some of those. But until they're fluent and know just where to go, we do have them tell us how to write it. And we write it once more on the board, and then they proofread their own work comparing. Did they do it right? So you can teach a whole class at once and not just one individual if you have them coordinated in where they are. But we also need to test children because all of them aren't at the same stage. And it really does pay and helps it be much less frustrating for them if they're kept at a level they can work with. So after the word study and spelling rules, then when do we teach reading? Well, we have three little readers on creation. In the beginning, from firmament to seasons, and abundantly blessed. The first little reader is always the hardest for them. And this is only the first day of creation. But they're getting used to the routine. So that's what makes it the hardest. The second book is days two through four. And the third book, five through seven. And when the children read these, it doesn't look like a lot of reading. But they also read the Bible. They read everything from the Bible. And we're also having them memorize Genesis 1. We have scripture music, and we do memory work by just preferably out of doors if the weather allows. Put them around in a circle. You can do the whole group at once. Put them around in a circle, at least to start with. When they get toward the end of the chapter, you have to do a little different. But at first, you can put them in a circle, read the passage, a phrase at a time, then a verse at a time, and we memorize it. And to follow the course we have in the beginning of this book, and I also have it in what we call the special instruction sheets that come in the creation reading course pack, there's uh, the in the beginning progress checklist. Now this is for the teacher and the student to keep track of where you go. What do you do first? What do you do next? And how do you progress? This is the steps for it. And so the first book here is mentioned on the progress checklist, but you can't really see how to teach it. That's what this book is about.